Hi, my name is Robin Wong. I'm a photographer based in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. I have with me the Panasonic 100 to 300 f4 to 5.6 lens. And I want to share my experience using this lens in this video. Let's do this! Before we dive in, here are some important disclaimers. I have no connection or affiliation with Panasonic. I bought this lens with my own money and the main reason I got this lens was because recently I have a job that requires me to shoot from quite a far distance and I needed this 300mm reach. I've done the shoot, I've delivered my shots to my clients. Unfortunately, I can't share the shots with you guys because those were private clients and since I have this lens with me now, I thought it would be great great for me to do something with this lens and share my experience using this lens and some fresh images with you guys in this video. This Panasonic 100 to 300 is one of the few options available for micro four thirds system when it comes to budget super telephoto zoom lenses. While this is a budget lens, it offers the reach of 300 millimeters at the longest telephoto end that's equivalent to 600 millimeters in 35 millimeters format, and that is truly impressive considering how compact this lens is. Is. And I'm now in Kuala Lumpur Bird Park. I'm gonna bring this lens out together with my OM system, OM1 camera. We're gonna grab some bird shots and we're gonna share what I like and dislike about this lens and of course plenty of fresh new bird photographs. I really like the handling of this Panasonic 100 to 300 on my OM system OM1 camera body. The lens balances very well with the camera body. I've been using this combination shooting in this Quanpo bird part for more than two hours. And I didn't feel any strain or any difficulty on my wrist, my elbow, any parts of my hands. The shooting experience has been very comfortable. I also treasure the compactness of this lens for what it is. It is a zoom lens from 100 to 300 millimeters and that's actually super telephoto range. They still managed to keep this lens very small, very compact, and it's actually very, very light. The autofocus performance of this lens is actually very good. Pairing with this OM system, OM1, I just left the camera's subject detection AI bird tracking on at all times. So I just point the lens at any bird and the camera will automatically find the birds immediately. All I have to do is just press the shutter button and I nail the, the bird birds in focus almost all the time with no issue whatsoever. In terms of image quality, this lens is actually very sharp. Of course, I'm not expecting the sharpness level to match the pro-grade lens, say the Olympus 300 f4 Pro lens, but for a budget lens, the image output, the sharpness, the rendering is actually very impressive. The lens is sharp from 100mm all the way to the longest end 300mm 
textures. I don't see significant drop of sharpness even at the longest end. And in terms of fine details capture, contrast, I can render really, really good images. I'm very happy with. I don't see much technical flow con control problems. Of course, there's chromatic aberration there and here. Of course, there's some flare or vignetting, but none of those are deal breaker. And for a budget lens, to me, that is truly impressive. Oh, I also quite like the bokeh rendering of this lens. It is not nervous. It is not too distracting in the background. It's actually quite smooth and buttery. Overall, I'm actually very, very happy with what this lens can do. I'm sure some people ask, hey Robin, how does this Panasonic 100-300 compare to the excellent Olympus 75-300? I've actually done a full review for that Olympus 75-300 lens before. I'll put the link to the video up here. Please check it out if you have not done so. Now, this Panasonic 100-300 lens has two main advantages over the Olympus 75-300. The first advantage is the brighter aperture opening. This Panasonic, the aperture range is from f4 to 5.6. At the longest telephoto end, at the 300 millimeters reach, this lens has the brightest aperture opening of f5.6. Whereas the Olympus lens, it starts from f4.8 to 6.7. Meaning that at the longest 300 millimeters on the Olympus 75 to 300, your aperture is stopped down to 6.7. I understand that f6.7 to f5.6, that's not really a big deal. It's maybe about half a stop or less, but in some situations, it will mean that you can use or you can get away with lower ISO settings or faster shutter speeds, which gives this Panasonic 100 to, to 300 a slight advantage over the Olympus. Of course, it's not a big deal breaker whatsoever. It's just a slight advantage on this Panasonic's lens. The second advantage of using this Panasonic 100 to 300 is the lens, it has image stabilization built in. This will definitely benefit you if you are using the lens on a camera body that doesn't have image stabilization at all. And there are many micro four thirds camera body that doesn't have built in image stabilization. If you use the Olympus 75 to 300 on these camera bodies, you get no stabilization at all. Especially if you're shooting at long range, such as the super telephoto range, it goes all the way to 300 millimeters. And this is where stabilization really matters. So having the stab stabilization in this lens, it actually really helps. In terms of image quality, I don't think there is a big difference between this Panasonic 100 to 300 versus the Olympus 75 to 300. I think both lenses produce 
excellent results. They are both sharp. I don't think you'll be disappointed with either one of these lenses. But if you look at the cost and of course the benefits you get from this lens, it seems like this Panasonic offers a little bit more than the Olympus, especially if you are going for the second version. Uh, the lens that I have here is the Mark One of this 100 to 300 millimeters lens. If you go to the Mark II version, the lens even has weather sealing. So ultimately, who is this lens for? This Panasonic 100 to 300 f/4 to 5.6. It is for budget-conscious photographers who do not necessarily shoot wildlife or earn a living with a super telephoto lens but you still occasionally wanted that long reach and have some fun with super telephoto i think this budget option is incredible while it is not expensive this lens offers a really long reach in such a compact form factor and you still get really good image quality of course if you are a professional photographer doing wildlife or bird photography, you should be aiming for the pro-grade lenses like the Olympus 300 f4 Pro or the excellent 150 to 400 f4.5 Pro. I think these lenses will definitely give you the best of the best when it comes to micro photos, super telephoto photography. But if you are not a professional and if you don't want to break the bank to enjoy photography, I think this lens is not a bad lens. That's all to share about this Panasonic 100 to 300 f4 to 5.6 lens. Have you owned one yourself? Do you share your thoughts and experiences in this lens in the comments below? I'd love to hear from you. If you found my sharing beneficial, if you've enjoyed looking at my photographs, please consider buying me a cup of coffee or you can contribute directly to my PayPal links in the description below on how you can do that. Any small contribution goes a long way, will definitely help me to continue making more content and publish them right here. Until the next one, please go out and take more photographs. Bye-bye.